Welcome to Set Free Church in Flowery Branch, Georgia. This is April 19th. We are still under quarantine. And so uh, what I'd like to do today is to give you some encouraging scriptures. Because out there on the internet, there's all kinds of stuff that people listen to that are not true. And as Christians, we are supposed to listen to the Word of God. We, the Holy Spirit is in every believer, and we need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit and block out all that other nonsense and pay attention to what God's saying to us. So uh, uh, today I, I want to give you that encouragement. We're going to be in a few different scriptures today. So uh, we're going to begin with uh, John chapter 14, verses 15 to 17 and then John 16 and 7. So uh, if you want, you can follow along in your Bible or just listen. Uh, but, but really open your heart to where you will be able to receive what God is saying to you. This is not Kenny speaking. This is the Holy Spirit wanting to speak to you. So I'd like to talk about the Spirit in us. Every Christian has the Holy Spirit living inside. The sad thing is, is that we have the option to stiff arm the Holy Spirit and lean on our own understanding, but that doesn't work. Okay, so if you wanna live a life of victory, then pay attention to this. John chapter 14, verses 15 to 17, it says, uh, Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey what I command. So the question is, do you love him? Are you obedient to what he says do? This is the, one of the hardest times in my life because scripture says, forsake not the gathering together of the saints, and yet it's illegal to gather together. And so uh, that's where we're at. But the first thing is, is you've got to love the Lord Jesus. Uh, think about what he did for you. Uh, he paid the price so that we can go to heaven and not have to burn in hell forever. That's pretty awesome. And then verse 16 says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. You know, the Holy Spirit never leaves a Christian. You know, it, it, God's not an Indian giver. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. People who are not saved don't understand the Bible. They don't understand that we have a counselor that is the greatest in, world, in, in the world has ever known. We have the Holy Spirit of God living in us. Can you capture that for a minute? But you know him, Christian. For he lives with you and will be in you. What a great gift that God has given us is his own spirit living in us. Then John 16, 7 says, But I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And so... Jesus promised us that, uh, that he will send the Holy Spirit to live in us. Guys, this is huge. There, there, this is a miracle uh, like none other that the Spirit of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is dwelling each and every Christian. But are we forced to listen? In Acts chapter 7, verse 51, it says, You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Uncircumcised hearts is like a, we have, we're callous because of what we've been through in our lives. And we choose to remain that way because God wants us to peel that stuff back. And uncircumcised ears, in other words, our ears are covered. We won't listen 
to what the Spirit of God says. Guys, we have got to let down our defenses and listen to what God says. And God speaks to us through His Word. Everybody wants to know, what does God want me to be? What does God want me to do? Well, read the Bible. He'll reveal it to you if you read His Word. So don't ask that you don't know what uh, God's plan is for your life if you're not willing to read the Bible. That, that's His plan for your life. Uh, you are the Spirit's temple. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, you do not know that your do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? He lives in you. Who is in you? Whom you have received, have received, it's past tense. When you got saved, you received the Holy Spirit in you. You are not your own. You have been bought and paid for. Uh, Jesus paid the price for you on the cross. So you're, you're not your own anymore. Uh, we need to listen to the owner, right? Jesus owns us. We need, we need to do what he says. The first scripture says, if you love me, you'll obey what I command. So do you love him? Are you obedient to the word of God? This may be a day for some soul searching for all of us. Are we really obedient to the word of God? Because everything else hinges on that. And so, the Holy Spirit gives us new life. John chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. There will be no one in heaven that didn't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in them today. Everybody's all upset about all this coronavirus stuff when 10 times as many people die from the flu as coronavirus. And then yet, 4,000 babies die every day. Guess what? They're in heaven. They're in heaven. The Holy Spirit shows us God's love. Romans 5.5 5 says, And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out. That's past tense. It's already done. Poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. So God plants the Holy Spirit in us and the Holy Spirit teaches us. Please don't be afraid of the coronavirus. Don't be afraid. You know, their perfect love casts out fear. Simply listen to the Holy Spirit. Now, you know, be safe, be wise. You know, don't go hugging on people at Walmart. But, you know, there, you can use common sense in this thing. The Holy Spirit empowers us for ministry. This is really important uh, to us uh, and, and people in set free churches all over because we're all about ministry, doing the will of God, not just knowing, but doing. So it says in Acts chapter 1, 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. I don't know about you guys, but I like power. I like big, fast engines. But you know what? That, them, them hot rods ain't going to do you any good until you stomp on the throttle. How about you? You've got the power in you. Will you use it? That's up to you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So, are you representing Jesus wherever you go? That's what I love about Set Free is we have set free t-shirts that says train to serve Jesus or Jesus tougher than hell. We have set free caps. People know what we're about wherever we go. That's, that's huge. I love it. People come up to me. I love Walmart's my favorite fishing hole. I love it when people come up to me and talk to me, you know, because they see I've got a set free hat on and uh, it's, it's just great. And I also love to be, just to say God bless you to cashiers. 
you know, they're having a hard time. They've got to deal with a whole bunch of Walmart people all day long. And so they could use an occasional God bless you. The Holy Spirit teaches us what to say. A lot of people, they, they don't want to go out and talk to people because they don't know what to say. Well, you're not supposed to know what to say. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. And let him speak through you. Don't stifle him. Luke chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. When you are brought before synagogues, rulers and authorities, that means court sometimes, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time. At that time. You don't have to get some speech prepared. The Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Guys, we need to learn to lean on Him in all the aspects of our life. You know, not, not just when it's uh, comfortable, but whatever we're going through, God's not surprised. Uh, he knows what we're going through, and He will never give us anything beyond what we can bear. So, if you're truly putting your trust in Him and not men, not on the gossip sessions and Facebook, but on the Word of God, He'll see you through it. That doesn't mean it's not going to be hard, but He'll see you through it. And finally, the Holy Spirit enables us to live the Christian life. And this is in Romans 8, 5 to 9. The Holy Spirit enables us to live out this Christian life. And how do you do that? You obey the Word of God. We started with that in the beginning. If you love me, you'll obey me. Don't say you're a Christian if you don't love the Lord. Come on, man. So it says here in verse 8, or verse 5, those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. What do you desire? What's your desire? Is your desire to be a better ambassador for Christ? Is that your desire really? Because your whole life will change if that's really your desire because you've got to get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit work through you. Are you willing to do that? This is a great time to, be, to deal with these issues, guys, because the whole world is locked down just because of this corona thing. But, but who do you turn to? You sure don't turn to the media. You turn to God's Word. And you pay attention and you apply God's Word to your life. He'll never let you down. Verse 6, the mind of sinful man is death. You know, before you got saved, you were headed for death. Eternal death. But the mind controlled, so if you allow the Holy Spirit to control your mind... He's, he's not going to come in against your will. But if you listen to the Spirit that's in you, if you're saved, it says here, the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. Just like we were before we got saved. It does not submit to God's law, law nor can it do so. Heathens can't uh, fulfill the calling of God. The Spirit ain't in there. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. There, it can't happen. You, however, Christian, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, you got to come to grips with that question right there. Because if the Spirit of God doesn't live in you, you're not saved. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. We've got the power. We have no excuse. Everything we need to know about living this Christian life is in this book. So how about you? Are you willing to surrender to what God wants for you? We can get through this thing together. This coronavirus is no surprise to God. 
He's got this thing. The question is, does he have you? How about you? Today may be the day that you need to do business with God and surrender yourself fully to him because there really is no partial surrender. You're either surrendered to him or not. These, these milk toast Christians are not pleasing God because when you come down to it, they don't belong to him. So do business with God today and don't worry about the coronavirus. Like I said, it's no surprise to God. He's got this thing. And if you belong to him, he's got you too. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for the ability that we have uh, that we can come to you 24-7. Uh, you're always uh, on call. And you love us and you're eager to hear from us. Father, I pray for everyone out there today, Lord, that has, has, has fear in, about this corona. Uh, disease. Father, I pray that you would comfort them and love on them and let them know you've got it. You're going to handle it. And so I thank you for that. Father, I pray that uh, as we're going through this quarantine thing, that when this thing is over, uh, your kids will come back to church all across this nation, all across this world, that when this thing is over, we will not forsake the gathering together of the saints. We will come to church. I thank you, God. Thank you for your church, Father, where we can come together and love each other and share our hurts, share our victories. Uh, Father, it's, it's where we need to be. And so, Father, uh, uh, encourage us and strengthen us during this time, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.